seems it's time. So let's get started. Wow, uh, thank you for coming, joining to this uh, presentation. Uh, during the presentation, we want to share a lot of uh, important information and the tools we developed through the year operation. On uh, behalf of our group, today we have three uh, presenters. Uh, myself, uh, my name is Ken Garash, and I'm leading the project. And here are also Asako Ishigaki from NTT Software, also uh, Akihiro Motoki-san from NEC. So this is a timeline of our project. As you can see, the project just began uh, in June 2014. At the time, uh, we have almost eight people, not fully dedicated, but a total uh, eight people were, were there. And uh, at that moment, we didn't have any knowledge about uh, operate, operation of uh, OpenStack. That's why we ran to 100 servers and did uh, many scalable tests. And then the team is growing. And also, we did many tests, like a recovery test. And finally, we got uh, 14 people. And now, uh, from this May, uh, we providing uh, 24 by 7 support. So our team members are highly skillful people. But uh, still, we have a few rules. Uh, sometimes we call it culture. This is important to uh, achieve a higher output by the team. First one is uh, we are just focusing on using OpenStack instead of developing OpenStack. You know, our team members' numbers are highly limited, so now we are just focusing on using OpenStack, not developing OpenStack. And also, uh, human resources is the most important asset for us and highly limited. That's why we are always thinking of reducing OPEX, promoting automation. So anything that a human needs to do more than twice must be automated. This is one of the key principles of our teams. Also, we are, uh, actively uh, support HA and also introducing self healing. This is the tools we are using. Most of the tools for deployment and uh, operation we are using Ansible and Python, and some tools are written in shell script. And uh, this is our CI CD environment. Uh, not much difference to the community. But uh, using uh, this CI-CD environment, uh, we've already created more than 2,000 patches in 2015, this year already. Also, uh, we are deploying more than 200 patches to the actual production environment. Let me talk about our operations. Uh, this is very brief overview of our OpenStack configurations. Actually, are uh, not uh, different from the uh, architecture I presented at uh, Paris uh, OpenStack Summit. So if you have interest, please check the URL. And um, here is the basic uh, ideas. We put more than double redundancies for hardware and we put at least triple redundancies for software. So we support uh, HA. So uh, you know the operator doesn't need to go uh, to the data center or operation room if there is just one failure. You can just take enough sleep over the weekend, and on Monday, you can go to data center or operation room of a table, and then you can fix it. Uh, this is uh, our deployment tools. So once you purchase the hardware, then operator registers hardware information to the CMDB, this kind of CMDB. 
Uh, this CMDB uh, holds information about hardware information and the location of the lags. Also, it has uh, network information as well. And um, interesting thing is uh, you can specify load of the hardware by using this CMDB. Actually, this is just a list of our Ansible playbooks. And uh, you can pick uh, any uh, playbooks, whatever you want to assign to the hardware. So in this example, uh, you can see uh, you want to apply a normal node that is a common playbook for all the servers. And also, you want to configure this hardware as a Nova Compute, which supports a special flavor called Nova Compute Standard 1. And uh, based on this configuration, our Ansible uh, lead those tags and create this kind of inventory. We, uh, it is called dynamic inventory in Ansible. And uh, as you can see, uh, this normal node appears in here. And also, you can, wow. You can see normal compute standard one appears here. So once our operators configure, uh, select the playbooks, then those playbooks are automatically applied to the hardware. So using this CMDB, we can understand the configuration of the hardware and the history of the hardware failures, but also uh, loads of the hardware. Uh, we also actively developed uh, many tools. As for the deployment, we have uh, and playbooks for network configuration, account, logging, service, drivers, and the total we have 37 playbooks. And uh, this is an example of the most uh, difficult one. And uh, in this setup, we need to create a compiler hard disk driver in this uh, playbook. First, uh, it goes to the cloud and launching a VM and install uh, kernel development tools, like uh, libraries. And uh, using the VM, we compile the hard disk driver and also uh, do firmware update. And finally, we install the kernel driver and uh, create a file system. All the complicated uh, procedure is done by just one uh, Ansible playbook. Also, uh, we have uh, playbooks for OpenStack. Total, we have 62 playbooks. And uh, using this one, we can configure HA, like I mentioned before. So as for the opera operation, we are actively developed. Now uh, we can take a usage for building purpose. Also, we can migrate a bunch of VMs and backups. Also, we can uh, manipulate a bunch of users. Also, uh, we are developing uh, tools for health check. This is an example of our tools called per host instance check. Uh, using uh, these tools, you can see, uh, you can specify the Nova compute, and uh, you can check whether uh, BM is booting up, also taking a log, getting a network, getting metadata, can log in to the VM and SSH. All the things are tested. So if you make uh, some modification to the Nova compute, then we run uh, this tool and check whether the node is configured correctly or not. So today uh, we have this tool, so we can uh, update our environment very aggressively. So uh, if you want to know more about our operating tools, we have another talk at 4.40. The room is here, so please come. Next, I want to talk about our monitoring system. 
This is our monitoring systems. Uh, we are using Zabbix for detecting real-time alert. Also, we are analyzing all the logs using Elasticsearch. This is for uh, detecting uh, future bugs, and also uh, we uh, use it to detect some malicious activities. Let me talk about uh, Zabbix configuration. So right now, uh, we are monitoring mo uh, about uh, 2,000 items. That is for general stuff like a memory, CPU network, hard disk usage. Also, we have a simple self-healing mechanism like process restarts. Uh, as for the OpenStack, actually we have uh, about uh, 4,000 items we are monitoring now, and uh, about uh, uh, 65 uh, self-healing mechanisms have already been deployed. Let me uh, pick uh, two examples. One is uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, this is our configuration. We are using a three-node cluster, and we are uh, partitioning by setting alt key. In this setup, uh, Zabbix keep watching whether there is a split braining or not by using these parameters. And also, we uh, keep checking the port and the process. And the, you know, uh, in this setup, at least we need to keep running uh, one node. In that sense, uh, Zabbix is checking whether there is a one uh, active node for the API check and the process check. We are checking the numbers. Uh, second one is about uh, MySQL. This is a little bit uh, difficult. Anyway, uh, this is our setup. There are four nodes here, and just one arbitrator is here. And all the read and write stuff go directly to just one node by the load balance. And in addition to uh, usual uh, monitoring items, we monitor those special items. Uh, to explain uh, those items, uh, I need to talk about our, uh, MySQL clusters. Uh, if you configure MySQL cluster, your commit is going like this one. It goes to the send queue of the my master node, and then it's sent to the slave node. And once slave node receives a commitment, then it returns OK. And uh, if master node gets this OK, then finally it returns OK to the client side. And um, here, uh, MySQL uh, asynchronously consumes the commitment and reflects to the disk. <laughs> this is a basic uh, principle of MySQL cluster. And here is a problem. Uh, if there is something wrong happens in between the queue and the disks, then sometimes must MySQL cluster freezes. So we test it, and in case of disk failure, that is not a problem. The slave node is automatically removed from the cluster. But the problem happens in case of uh, disk speed throttling in some reasons. In this case, the slave seems working correctly, but the writing speed is so slow. In that case, all the commitment message is uh, congested at a send queue and a receive queue. And once the receive queue is congested, there is no acknowledgement from the slave. But the uh, master believes this slave is working correctly. So in this situation, you cannot write uh, anything to the data database anymore. This creates a problem. So <laughs> this is our, uh, our dashboard when we lock the MySQL. Uh, you can see you will get uh, 
almost all the alert in this dashboard. But uh, don't, don't be upset. Uh, here is a reason. If you upset and do something wrong, then the problem becomes worse. Uh, in this case, uh, if uh, operators uh, reboot the OBS agent, or uh, in worst case, if operators reboot the network nodes, then uh, you will get, uh, you will lose all the connection to the running VMs. So if you cannot connect to the database, you can't do those uh, actions, operations. So it is important to understand what we can do and what we can, can't do if we have a problem. That needs to be uh, gathered, and we uh, gather those information and putting it to the, our knowledge base. So that is very important. And finally, uh, this is a self-healing mechanism we introduced. So the hard disk throttling, it sometimes happens when we take a backup of the My MySQL. So that's why we limit the node to take a backup. And also we are monitoring uh, those items now. And if there is some changes to those items, then the node is removed from the cluster automatically. Also, we uh, change the backup method. Uh, we used to uh, support, used to use uh, so-called online backup. But uh, now we switch to the more safe method. So first, we <coughs> take uh, the node from the cluster, just the desync from the cluster. Then we lock all the tables and create a backup. And after that, we return to the cluster and once just configure as synchronous again. And uh, by supporting these setups, uh, at, at, the, at this moment, we haven't had the same problems. We haven't had any uh, same problems. So just switch to the presenter and uh, talk about uh, log analytics. I talk about our log analytics. We have four purposes of log analytics. First, we have to detect critical system failure and to recover them immediately. We would be happy if logs could tell us system failures beforehand. Second, we need to dete detect malicious access. When users' floating IPs are accessed maliciously, we need to notify users. Third, we need to detect non-critical errors or warnings. Of course, they are better to be fixed as soon as possible. Bugs might be found by those logs. Fourth, we want to identify errors and warnings that have no service impact. We'd like to filter out them next time. We call them ignorable log. Large numbers of logs are logged by each component of system, such as hardware, Linux kernel, OpenStack, and operation tools. It's so difficult for us to find out, import, uh, find out important rare message from them. An example of a day, there were 100,000 logs of critical error and warning. But serious logs were not found in this day. 
there were only six non-critical error logs and six ignorable logs. We analyze logs and add the result to our blacklist and whitelist. Logs found in our blacklist are sent to Zabbix. Ignorable logs are filtered out with our whitelist. The rest are shown in Kibana. We operators analyze them. We add critical logs to the blacklist as well as ignorable logs to the whitelist. Kibana dashboard is very useful for our log analysis so that the whitelist can keep growing. Logs to be analyzed have been quite reduced. Now, let me explain our architecture of log processing, adopting black and white list. Blue and T on every node send logs to the log servers. Some devices which cannot be, be installed fluently on send logs to the log servers using RSS log. Rules of the blacklist and whitelist are contained in configurations of FluentD. FluentD sends serious logs to Zabbix following the blacklist. And FluentD raises a flag to logs a flag to ignorable logs following the blacklist. And FluentD puts metadata to logs in order to create graphs from them. Then logs are stored in el Elasticsearch. Kibana shows graphs by referring Elasticsearch records. There are simplified examples. First, example indicates a hardware failure. This message is contained in our blacklist, so FluentD sent this log to Zabbix. An alert on Zabbix will tell us the failure immediately. The second example is an IDS log. FluentD extracts the source IP from the message and inserts IDS value to the item key. Kibana makes graphs from this metadata. The third example indicates user's operation error. Since this error doesn't impact to our system, we have already added the message to the whitelist. FluentD inserts ignore value to item key. Kibana filters out this log from all graphs. Let me show you some of our whitelist. The first message indicates access without any token. Health check from load balancers can't get tokens, so this warning continues at all times in our system. We watch on the trend of response calls. We don't need the, this log itself. The second message indicates that user's request was denied due to quota limitation. It has no impact to the system, but the log has error level. I think it should be info log. The third message indicates Literally, hypervisor has more disk space than Nova database expected. It occurs when instance, in instance of shut-off status exists. This is commonplace condi condition. We ignore this log. We have enhanced our whitelist. As a result, we have been reducing we have been reducing logs to be analyzed. In other words, many meaningless logs of error or warning bother OpenStack operators. As you can see in these two graphs of Kibana, our whitelist 
is very efficient, uh, very effective. One year ago, when we did dog fooding, we could not analyze all logs. Today, two or three hours are sufficient to analyze all logs. Next, let me show you some of our blacklist. The first example indicates that there is this problem on a computer node. Fluentd send this log to Zabbix as warning level. The second message indicates that Corosync needs clean up its resources. This condition itself does not impact to our system. Thus, Fluentd send this log to Zabbix as information level instead of warning level. We operators find out a lot. Uh, we operators found, find this alert on weekday daytime and clean up them. This rule has helped us several times. The third message indicates a failure of database backup, but we shouldn't worry about the individual failure because backup is scheduled four times a day. FluentD send this log to Zabbix as information level. If this alert continued, we would debug on it. Sorry. Uh, well, let me demonstrate usage of Kibana. Uh, six dashboards are available on Kibana. We will show you three of them. First, oh, sorry. This is a dashboard of all logs. You can put queries to filter logs. For example, this query filter out ignorable log. Let's select toggle checkbox to enable this query. Then the graphs logs of the graph has reduced. Raw logs are also available on Kibana, classified by their log levels. Ex expanding the critical logs panel, you, you will find raw message of critical logs. You can full text search on all the logs. Let's add a query to find logs containing create failure. And wait a moment. Then the result have been appeared containing create failed text. This uh, all log panel is very useful to grasp overview. We prepared dashboard to provide further analysis. This is a dashboard of error logs. Let's take a look on a day in September. Then, uh, since around 18 o'clock, errors have increased and continued. This graph tells us that neutron DHCP agent log have increased at that time. And this graph also indicates that many errors appeared in neutron. 
I try to narrow down to neutron logs. Then now neutron has been proved to be in some failure. Wall logs would help analyzing what causes. Then this is dashboard of OpenStack access. This graph colors calls API access is of each services. You can see detail. And this shows trend of rep response calls classified into normal authentication failure, invalid request, and system error. Later, I'll analyze about this system error. <coughs> this is important list of users who failed to log in to Horizon. The user failed dozens of times, so he may be taking over his account. We'd better to contact him. Now, I analyze the system error. Let's narrow down the logs to error response. Check this checkbox. You can find detail of the access log. And adding filter with request ID. Then you can see logs related to this axis. Oh, I found an error. That's all of my <laughs> demonstration. Uh, actually, <laughs> we just finished the presentation. And uh, as I mentioned, we have another presentation from uh, 440. And also, uh, we brought all the system to uh, presentation room. Uh, let's see, today uh, we have a demo uh, at the NEC booth, H4. Also, tomorrow we have a demo at the S14. So if we want to try our tools and uh, especially log analytics, you can come and we can discuss. And also if you have further uh, questions, comments, you can send email to this. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I think uh, we can pick uh, some questions. Do you have any questions? Don't? Not much? So anyway, uh, we have an exhibition all the day. So please come and discuss. Thank you very much.